hey hey how's it going do it yourselfers welcome to day one of the garage build today we're going to get started on grading the area where the garage or the slab for the garage is going to go hopefully we'll also get to digging out the footings also maybe putting in some base as well but before the work starts i'm actually going to quickly explain to you the specifics for this slab and this is especially important if you like me plan on building a garage at a future date and installing a car lift in there because the slab has to be a certain thickness for you to be able to safely install a car, car lift in your garage. All right, so as I've mentioned before, the garage I'm building is gonna be 40 by 50. Now, if you look at these instructions from VersaTube, since that's where I got the kit for this garage, it says 50 feet, five inches, 40 feet, six inches. Now, those extra inches are simply for the framing and also allow for the sheeting to go outside of the building, but the size of the building itself is gonna be 40 by 50. And these are the minimum requirements for the slab according to VersaTube. Uh, as you can see here, they require a minimum four inch slab, and then they require 12 inch by 12 inch footings. Now, footings or footers, uh, you know, these are I think called slightly different things depending on what part of the country you live in, but as you can see, these are 12 inches wide and 12 inches tall, not taking into account the slab. So at the top here on the alt, and this footing goes all around the circumference of the red rectangle that's going to be your slab for the garage. So you get a 12 inch by 12 inch plus four inches. So you, on the outside, it's gonna be 16 inches just on the inside. So this is a 12 inch here at least, and then four inch for the slab. Now underneath your slab, they also require you put three or four inches of aggregate or base. Now where I live this is called class 2 base. So yeah three to four inches of this and then you compact it and then your slab goes over this. All right now as far as what I decided to do was to tw keep the 12 by 12 inch footings all around the circumference but I decided to go with a five inch slab because most car lifts require a minimum of four inches and whenever you put in a slab you tell the contractor or anybody even yourself to go with a four inch slab there's going to be areas in there no matter how you even you try to get it Get the get the ground there's going to be areas in there that's going to be less than four inches it's going to be most more than likely three to four inch or three to five inch depending which areas and then if you get unlucky enough where the car lift is going to go somewhere that's you know a little bit less has a little bit less concrete then that's not really safe so actually i decided to go with a five inch slab and also i have a very good feeling where the car lifts are going to go so i'm going to be able to actually remove or not put so much base in those areas so i would have up to seven to eight uh, inches of concrete where the car lifts are gonna go. That's if the inspector allows for it, which they wish they should, you know, it shouldn't be a problem, but just in case they don't, you know, I still have a five inch slab. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot the PSI for your concrete, VersaTube requires a minimum of uh, 3000 PSI concrete, but you know, they ship out these uh, buildings, they don't, you know, they don't know you're gonna put a car lift in it. That's just the minimum requirement as far as supporting the building that's gonna be built on top of the slab. But, you know, the minimum requirement for most car lifts, again, is also 3,000 PSI. But again, that's the minimum requirement. So I decided to go with the 4,000 PSI concrete. You know, you can go higher, but when it gets warm out where I live and you're pouring concrete, you know, you go 4,500, 5,000 PSI concrete. I've been told, you know, it's going to be really hard to pour that concrete and, you know, be able to do the job properly. Sometimes you run into trouble, things start drying up or hardening up too quickly and you don't want that to happen. So I decided to go with the 4,000 PSI concrete. All right, now before the work starts and my contractor gets here, I'm gonna quickly go over how the permitting or the permit process was for this building. All right, so the permit process is gonna be obviously different from state to state, even county from county. But where I live, basically you go into the county's office, there's gonna be four departments they send you to. First, then you gotta go to a different department after you're done with county. Again, where I live in Southern California. First was zoning department. Basically, you go in there, you take in a site plan, drawing all the, where, where the garage is gonna go, where your house is, where your septic system is, if you have one, where your shed is, all the buildings, showing them that you have enough distance from where the proposed garage or shop is gonna be to the neighbors. If that, that all checks out, then you're good in zoning. But where I lived, they, they were really sticklers about you know everything being up to scale, the planning, the the, the graphs, the maps being up to scale. So I had to hire a company, pay them a couple hundred dollars, they drew it out for me, but it was still a couple of times back and forth to figure it out. Then from zoning, they sent me to engineering. Now, when you go to engineering, you need engineering plans. Now, luckily Versa2 provides engineering plans, you gotta pay for them. Mine costs 2,500 bucks, but they come stamped, wet stamped from an engineer in California, which then, which makes life a lot easier, especially if they sign a form 
which I, you know, it's going to be different from county to county. The engineer basically signs that form. If, that's, if he signs that extra form, then it's going to be, life is going to be a lot easier at engineering when you go to county. Basically, you take in the engineering plans and that form, and they, they approve it right away, and you go to the next department. Next department was land development. Basically, those guys want to make sure you're not, you're not changing the topography of the land too much. You know, you're getting rid of the waste if you have any during construction and all that, which was very smooth. My main problem was with first the zoning and then engineering a little bit. But then the fourth department, again, was going to be uh, is environmental and health or environmental health, if I remember. They basically want to make sure you're not building near or on top of a septic system where their leach lines are. You're not going to disturb that soil. And after those four departments, they send you to the fire department. The fire department obviously checks and makes sure this building is not going to be a fire hazard. You know, there's not going to be any problems with that. Also, they check and see whether you're going to need sprinklers or not. My building, they told me, since it's bigger than 600 square feet, is going to need a sprinkler system. So that's going to be an extra spank expense. But, you know, well, at least I'll get the building up. I can put a car lift in there. The fire, the sprinklers, they told me, can't wait, uh, you know, six months to a year. But, you know, it's going to cost a little bit of money. Maybe I'll put them in myself. We'll see. And I think that covers everything. Now let's get to watching the work happen. So here you can see the footings drawn out all around the slab and being dug using the excavator. All right, so this circus act you see on the screen by me I believe needs an explanation. Now you can't see it in the picture, but there are power lines right above the garage and we need to maintain a certain amount of clearance. And that's just me using two PVC pipes attached to one another to see whether we have that clearance or not. And I made the measurement the best I could and the decision was made that we do not. So we kept on digging. All right, so after we got finished digging, it was time to put in the form. You can see on the screen my contractor going around and making measurements, making sure it's gonna be square. Okay, next up, it's time for some base. That's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification, and also check out my other videos in the meantime. There'll be links on the screen, also links in the suggestion box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.